Hey everybody, Teldo here and today we're gonna have a first look at MXM, or also called Master X Master. It's NCSoft's new MOBA and yeah, I know you might say, oh, MOBA, there are already so many MOBAs and I'm kind of tired of it. But bear with me because this game, I think, is quite different and it's more like a mixture or a hybrid between a MOBA and an MMORPG, which makes a lot of sense for a company like NCSoft because they primarily publish MMORPGs. And it, what's also interesting about this game is that it tries to combine the different franchises from NCSoft with the different heroes from their games like Gears 2, Played in Soul, Wildstar, Ion, Lineage, etc. And it throws those heroes together and you have the, some of the mechanics from those heroes from those different games and I think it's really cool. And uh, what else do I mean by this game having kind of an MMO feel to it. Well, there's a lot of content, first of all, for a first alpha. There is a 5 vs 5 MOBA-like game mode, which is also quite different from other MOBAs, uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. There's also a 3 vs 3 team deathmatch in the game, which is kind of like WoW Arena or Bloodline Champions Arena, uh, with the difference that if you get a kill, the enemies are going to respawn after a while and you get some score for it. And when the time expires at the end, the team with the highest score wins. So I, personally, I'm not that big of a fan of this kind of um, game mode. But I mean, the 3 vs 3 was still very fun. I just personally would probably like it more if it was Last Man Standing. But I think maybe it doesn't work that well in this game. Anyway, it's a game mode that you could just solely focus on and some of my friends really enjoyed the 3 vs 3 and thought it was the best in the game. I personally like the 5 vs 5 more though. And on top of that also the game features PvE stages which I think is so cool. Those different PvE stages have different difficulties. You can do them solo or you can do them with a team. You can also try to speedrun them and do them a little bit faster. You get a score at the end which results in better loot. And yeah the game has a lot of loot in the PvE as well. There's crafting materials and you can use some of that loot to progress your character, your, your different heroes, and make them stronger for future PvE stages. So there's this whole progression part to it. It's a little convoluted and I haven't really fully understood it yet. There's a lot of different stuff you can get from PvE and I haven't really fully figured out how to use a lot of that stuff directly. It's also not massively well explained yet, uh, but it's definitely something they can keep working on. And I think it's just cool that that stuff exists. Also as a disclaimer, which is really important to say here right now, the PvE progression doesn't really carry over to PvP, so you don't have to worry about that. PvP is still focused around the skill factor. It doesn't really have those uh, stat boosts that you can get from the PvE in there. And also the game has an event calendar, which features different events from the different franchises. So for example, they had one event going during the technical alpha, which featured the fire temple from Ion, I believe. I haven't played the game, I don't know anything about this fire temple, but the very idea of having dungeons or zones from different MMORPGs you played in the past with different monsters or maybe even boss fights from those MMORPGs, that sounds so cool to me and I'm very excited about that. I can't really wait to try that out. Let's also talk about the key features that really made this game so interesting to me. Uh, first of all, the game has WASD controls, like it has direct controls and I love that because I'm a MMORPG PvP fan. I've always also liked MOBAs, but I just didn't like the mouse controls and the lack of depth because, I mean, you, you had different abilities, but they were on long cooldowns oftentimes and you couldn't really do that much. And well, you have the direct controls in this game, everything's a skill shot and you can dodge stuff, which I think is really cool. It's fairly mechanical, but also this game allows you to pick two heroes simultaneously and switch between them on the fly, which is so cool to me because, well, it's kind of like playing a shapeshift hero or something like engineering goers too, where you have the different kits you can switch between and when you switch, you just have a whole new set of abilities you can use immediately and you can combo it together and be a little bit creative with it, which I think is amazing. Um, the switch has 14 seconds cooldown and it gives you a few invulnerability frames and it also breaks CC from you, which makes the game very fast paced because it is a fairly bursty game. CC is very powerful in this game and using your swaps 
at the right time to avoid a lot of burst damage or some key CC abilities can really help and you can really outplay people with that, I believe. Another thing that feels MOBA, uh, not MOBA, another thing that feels MMO-like to me is that you can customize your hero. So you have four abilities you can choose from for every hero. And let's talk about this from the perspective of Ridlock, who is an a Guild Wars 2 hero, or character rather. You have a Pistol Whip ability, which I really like. It stuns enemies in front of you and deals heavy damage to them, which by the way is awesome that they have some of those mechanics from Guild Wars 2 in there. Um, then you have the Leap ability, which moves you forward. It's kind of like the Warrior Sword Leap in Guild Wars 2. It slows enemies and deals damage uh, at the location where you land. Then you have Headshot, which silences enemies. It's a pistol shot and um, it silences the enemy you hit with it, which is also awesome because it's a thief ability in Gores too. And you have Hamstring, which uh, deals heavy damage in front of you and slows enemies. Also, every hero has a defensive ability, which you cannot change. Redlock has a dodge roll there, which is very much like in Gores 2 as well. It's not as spammy like in Gores 2, so uh, you can only use it once every, I don't know, maybe 15 seconds or so. But still, it's a very strong ability and you can even avoid some key burst abilities with it. And every hero has an ultimate ability, which again, cannot really be changed, but Ridlock has an ability which makes his basic attack ranged and piercing, and it applies burning to the enemy. Also his normal basic attack applies burning as well. And that's also really cool. You, I mean, you, you can see it here. The game has a lot of the mechanics from Guild Wars 2 in it on that particular hero. You have the burn condition, you have the dodge roll, you have stuff like pistol whip or headshot uh, or that leap ability. and it just feels really fun. It, it makes sense in this game. It feels like it belongs to this game. Simultaneously, it also feels like it's kind of from Guild Wars 2. And I just love it. I had some... I had some really good feelings when playing this hero. Now let's talk a little bit about the 5 vs 5 game mode because that's the game mode that I enjoyed the most. It's called Titan Ruins, I believe. And just like in MOBAs, it has three lanes, it has towers and structures, it has minions pushing down those lanes, it also has different map ob objectives. And there's different ways you can win that game mode. You can kill the minions or enemy heroes, which gains you score. And if you reach a thousand score, that's one of the victory conditions, you win the game. If the time limit runs out, which I think is great that the game just doesn't have like super long matches, there's a definite length of every match so you know that the match isn't gonna last an hour or whatever. Um, and if the time runs out, the team with the highest score wins. Also, if you get 100 points, you spawn a titan which pushes down the mid lane. There's different titans with different abilities and you can push with that titan and destroy enemy structures. If you destroy the enemy core, you win the game. And those are the victory conditions and there's a bunch of different objectives which help with those conditions to win the game. There is an indoor boss which gives you a hundred score which basically spawns a titan immediately but the boss is pretty hard, has a bunch of skill shots that you have to avoid. And there's an outdoor boss which gives buffs to your entire team if you manage to kill it. But you also always have to watch out that the enemies don't see that and try to steal it from you, which I think is cool. The game has jungle mobs, which are a lot easier, but they give you buffs as well. It's kind of like red or blue buff in League of Legends. The game has sentry turrets, which give you vision if you capture them for a certain amount of time. And there's altars on the side, which spawn guardians next to them and if you kill those guards you can capture the altar and spawn a mini titan basically which pushes down a side lane and can also deal some heavy damage. Another thing that should be mentioned here right now, the game doesn't really have a shop in the game. There's no items in the 5 vs 5 game mode or any progression which can feed you into heavens and make you way stronger than anyone else in the game, which I think is really cool. I mean, I, I know that, uh, that some people really like it, being super fat and carrying a game super hard, but I love that this game is way more focused on the mechanics 
it's a very mechanical, bursty, fast game and you can avoid a lot of abilities and you can really outplay people mechanically. And I love that it's focused on that rather than just uh, trying to play the objectives and getting like a gold boost over your enemies and becoming stronger than them and snowballing the game in one direction. So I had a lot of fun in this game mode because it, unlike the 3 vs 3, oftentimes you find an enemy alone somewhere and you can have a quick 1 vs 1 against him or you can have 2 vs 2 and just smaller fights. There are those cool rotations happening that I love so much in games. I just love having the possibility to really out-rotate an enemy and outplay them that way. And uh, that's something that was missing for me on the 3 vs 3 game mode, but simultaneously the 3 vs 3 game mode was still very fun because it was mechanical and you could just uh, practice the abilities of your heroes and comboing it together and just learn the combat, the ins and outs of the combat. So overall I had just a blast with this game. I have to say though there are a few worries that I have with it so far. Um, one of them being, I'm not sure how responsive the game will be, because um, as a disclaimer, I've played the game from Europe and there were only an A servers right now, and it was very laggy for me. I still had a lot of fun with the game and I could still do some good stuff, but oftentimes sometimes just abilities didn't work, I couldn't use them in time, and it just felt really unresponsive in many regards. But simultaneously, um, the movement and everything felt really nice. In that regard, it felt responsive. I'm just a little worried about the netcode. I heard from some people that they found it super, super tight and nice and that they didn't really have any issues with the lags. But some other people, even from NA, told me that they had some lag spikes sometimes where they just couldn't do an ability. And that could just be that the servers weren't working properly because it's still a technical alpha and it's also there to test the servers and everything. So we'll have to wait and see how it goes. But I'm a little worried because, well, Plain Soul, for example, had a lot of lag issues and it was because it was a Korean game, just like MXM, the game was devastating. It, you had a huge d disadvantage if you didn't have like a super amazing ping. And I'm a little worried about that because that's what uh, Korean games are known for, that latency is really important there. And they don't really have issues with that because, well, Koreans have amazing internet and usually they just don't have that much of a problem with their latency. So I really hope that this won't become a problem in this game in the long run because the game itself felt amazing to me. There is a good variety of content. I can totally see myself playing this game a lot. Just having the PvE content to just play casually every now and then, maybe play with some friends that aren't too much into PvE that's awesome. Having the 3 versus 3 to just play with a couple of friends and just uh, throwing in a, qu a few quick games there, having those really fast matches, that feels fun to me. And the 5 versus 5 game mode is probably the mode that I'm going to be focusing on the most because it has this whole competitive feel to it and you can have those really cool rotations and I don't know, it's just really fun and I, I'm amazed by this because it really feels kind of like playing an MMORPG with the ability to just join a quick match. Yeah, I don't know. I really want to play this game and I hope that it becomes successful, but we'll have to see how it goes. This was the very first technical alpha and I'm looking forward to playing it more. I'm looking forward to playing it on EU servers especially and I will definitely look into making more content for this when I get the chance to. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the game. I am really curious. Uh, maybe you have the ability to play the game yourself. I would love to hear your experiences. If you enjoy those kinds of videos, please let me know by leaving a like behind because normally I don't really make those first look videos that often, but well, this is a game that I really enjoyed and I think it was it's totally worth sharing with you guys and I would love to know if you guys enjoyed this content. Anyways, also please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it. And yeah, see you guys next time. Bye bye!